All right, well, finally the T86 has arrived. I've been studying this thing for months and this is the first time I actually get to see one. So today we get to look at the brand new Bobcat T86 from a mechanics point of view, because everything else that's published out there is from either a salesman or a marketing point of view. So we're gonna dive right into the auxiliary hydraulics of this system, because that's the first thing everyone's real curious about is the super flow, and because this machine does come equipped with the super flow. So first thing we can see that we do have two sets of couplers here. We've got the three quarter set, which is kind of the standard set. And then we've got the one inch couplers, kind of like the Kubota, you know, they integrated it all into the same block. And then of course we got our case drain here and then we do have our seven pin connector here. And you can see I've already got hoses attached to it going down to my flow meter because we wanna see what this thing flows in a couple different uh, modes. We've got low flow or standard flow, I guess we call it. We've got high flow and then we've got super flow. So we've got three options. We're gonna dive into the cab here. There's not a lot to talk about as far as the cab goes. This is kind of the same as the other R series. Not much has changed inside the cab. You can see that this does have the polycarbonate Basically, they call this bulletproof glass where they don't have to have like the screen here all the way around. So it really increases visibility. So that's a neat option on these cabs. <clears throat> so looking at the screen, see, we, we can do um, standard flow and high flow without going um, into the screen, but we have to actually engage super flow. So I'll click that, we'll turn it on, check this out. Superflow attachment not recognized. Operating unapproved attachments in Superflow can cause attachment damage, serious injury, or death. Holy crap, <laughs> that's amazing. And of course, we're not afraid of death. So we're gonna go ahead and unlock. And you can see it turns on our Superflow. So in order to turn on the auxiliary hydraulics, the machine's gonna have to be running. Well, we can turn on standard flow, but we're gonna have to warm the hydraulics up before we can get high flow and super flow. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Okay, so now, now that the machine is running, there's standard flow, hit again, there's high flow, and hit it again, there's super flow. So we're gonna start on standard flow. So now we've got the engine running and it's gonna be loud. So I don't know how well you're gonna be able to hear me, but there's something interesting that I want you to see on this machine, that there's a difference between high flow and super flow. It's really interesting what they've done on this. This is new technology that we've never seen before on the Bobcats. So I'm gonna bring the high idle up and then we're gonna look at our flow meter down here and we'll see what our pressures are doing. got this valve shut off what I want you to see is the main relief pressure we're not looking at flow now because I've got it completely blocked off we're deadheaded and we're at 3400 you know 3480 psi right now okay I just turned off the auxiliary and I'm gonna open up the valve so we can get full flow through here and let, let's see what standard flow on this machine is able to achieve Standard flow, we're at 24, you know, almost 25 GPM on that gallons per minute. Okay, we just changed it over to high flow, 39 GPM right now, and this is just the high flow. Okay, we just engaged super flow. So now we got super flow, 46 GPM, 47. So 46, 47 GPM, and that's no load on the system. OK, 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the valve off. We're going to deadhead the, um, the auxiliaries on the super flow setting. And this is what's interesting that I want you to see. Okay, look at our main relief pressure. We're over 4,000 PSI. Where were we on just standard flow? Let's look at it one more time. Standard flow, our main relief, 34, almost 3,500 PSI. Now what's interesting about that is that we've got two different main relief pressures. And how we achieve that is now, you know, for the last 30 years, we've used pretty much the same main relief valve on all the Bobcats. And now with this new loader, we've got a two-stage main relief valve that is electronically controlled. So standard flow and high flow go off the main relief pressure of that 3,500 PSI. And we put it in super flow, we electronically move a shuttle in the main relief and now we're getting over 4,000 PSI main relief in Superflow. Really cool, never seen before technology in the Bobcat loaders anyways. And one other thing that's kind of unique about Superflow that I wanted to mention is that Superflow is not variable. And what I mean by that is that when we turn on Superflow, we pull our trigger, that's all you get. Superflow is either on or off. It's not like our standard flow and our high flow where we can use our paddle switch on our thumb, you know, using our thumb and vary the amount of flow we get to the attachment. Superflow is on or off. And Superflow gets priority over everything else. And what I mean by that, let's say we're running a big attachment, I don't know, a big mower or planer or something and we're going uphill. Okay, the, the machine, you know, we, we only got so much engine horsepower. And if we're trying to go up that hill and we're running out of engine horsepower, it's gonna slow the drive down you know, priority is gonna go to the super flow. So we'll slow the drive down, so you'll slow down going up the hill so that we can save that extra power to keep that super flow running at that um, at maximum GPM so that the attachment gets priority over everything else. So that's a couple unique things about super flow that we should know. All right, before we lift up the cab and take a look at what's under there, I want to kind of back up to these auxiliary fittings again. Again, like I said, in the same manifold, we've got three quarter and one inch. And what's important to know is that we're not running two separate hoses down here. We've just upgraded the size of the hose that feeds this block. And, and one set of hoses is what feeds both couplers, essentially. And you can see that just looking back here, these are auxiliary hoses that really have a lot of girth to them. I and mean, they're really big, solid, girthy hoses. And what, I can't, I can't stroke the hoses and say They're big one inch hoses, not three quarter hoses. <laughs> now I wanna look at some key features of this engine. This is the brand new Bobcat Doosan V2 engine. You know, the original series are our first generation of Bobcat engines. We consider that the V1, and that used the Delphi system. The T86 and the S86 are gonna be the very first loaders to use the D34, the Doosan 3.4 liter V2 engine that utilizes the new Bosch fuel system. So this is a big upgrade for these engines because the old ones, they kinda got a bad rap for their fuel systems, but these Bosch systems have really proven themselves to be an excellent uh, fuel injection system for these machines. So actually the very first machines to, to come out with this engine were our Versa handlers. There are some Versa handlers out there with the V2 engine, but as far as loaders go, T86 and S86 are the first ones. So yeah, it is, uh, she is packed in there. Now you'll notice that unlike our other R series, you know, where this is kind of a, just a blank cavity, now this is where the def tank is gonna be because this machine being 105 horsepower, it is gonna have to have def. Come on over the top, we can see that Bosch fuel system, but kind of what I wanna look at is back here, we can see our DOC is on top. And I know we can see the edge of it, but underneath is where our um, SCR is gonna run. So SCR on the bottom and the DOC is kind of stacked on top of that. Kind of hard to see, but if we go all the way back in here to our SCR, where is it at?
And there it is. We've got our depth injector that's going in kind of right in the center of the SCR now. Kind of different from our other machines. And I think one of the biggest things to notice is the cooling package of this. I mean, this thing is just ginormous. So, you know, if you remember the, the, the 770s and the uh, T870s, that was one of the issues we had running high flow attachments was keeping the machine cool. And I think that this is, uh, this is really gonna help solve that problem. And then, of course, crammed all back down in here next to the def tank. I know it's hard to see, there's a bunch of stuff back there, but that's where our uh, engine ECU is gonna be. Our um, def pump is kind of down there. We've got a fuse box up back here. Just a lot of, a lot of new interesting things. But one of the coolest things is, is the R series is not uh, known for how well the air filter housing or how efficient it is. Because essentially with this big giant fan up here, what has happened is this has just turned into a giant vacuum cleaner back here. And now it's sucking through the rear door this way and it's sucking in all the dirt and the debris and it just, it, it kind of fills this engine compartment up on the R series. So that's kind of been an issue. And, and when it fills all that dirt and debris in here, the air filter pulls all that in and it was clogging up the air filter really quick. And they've made an aspiration kit and stuff like that. But what's unique about this, and it's hard to see, but here's a plenum. <laughs> it's kind of a plenum, but it snorkels. It, it, it goes all the way down around the engine and comes back up to the top. So now up here, this unit is now our air intake for the air filter. So it's, like I said, completely different on this new T86 as the air comes in here and into the filter housing. So that's, I think that's really gonna help with keeping that air filter from clogging up so easy. And there are a lot of other key things about this engine that we could talk about, but really the engine compartment's not much different from the original R series. We just got a bigger engine in there. Another key thing that, that I do want to talk about is that this engine is not utilizing an EGR. They've got this thing tuned and running so clean that we do not need to run an EGR anymore. So that's pretty interesting. I've got a picture right here of, of the engine because you can't really see it on this one because so much stuff's packed in here. But here's one, an engine out of the machine. And we can see on this side of the machine, it's much cleaner. That, that's usually where the EGR and the EGR cooler would be. And now it's no longer there. So that's, that's a huge upgrade for this engine. Now, the government's still gonna make us use DEF and an SCR, but I bet they could get this clean enough where we wouldn't even have to use that. But I'm not the engineer, just a mechanic. Of course, I got the arms in the air and the uh, arm lock on and the cab up. Kind of just looking inside, you know, at first glance, you know, we got a lot of room up here. We've got our battery in the front underneath the cab. Again, I've kind of got my concerns about that. Under here, you know, we, we've upgraded the uh, fuse block. You know, we're gonna talk about that in a different video. But really, it doesn't look a whole lot different than a regular R series. But we can see that this big pump right here is now a piston pump, not a gear pump. I mean, of course, on the front, we do have our charge pump, which is a gear pump. But this one is how we achieve the super flow. And that is a very large piston pump. And of course, all the way Back in the back, I know it's really hard to see, but that's going to be our drive pumps, Superflow piston pump, and charge pump. And of course, our main control valve is kind of mounted to the back of the firewall. Again, it's not much different than uh, the other R series. But we can see on the bottom of the main control valve right here, this is usually where our main relief is. Well, this is still the main relief, but now we have an electronic coil attached to the main relief, and that's how we're achieving that dual main relief pressure when the, the superflow is turned on. Yeah, so really, that, that's about what I expected looking underneath the cab. Nothing, not, not much has really changed from the other R series uh, other than that piston pump and the um, two-piece, or the 
two-stage main relief valve, I guess. So, but I guess if you're not familiar with what with what is underneath the R series, we'll just go ahead and point out a couple things here on the T86. That there is one more difference is this large manifold block down here. I know it's kind of hard to see, but this large valve is now what controls our auxiliaries, and they've also got the bob tatch, the power bob tatch. You know how we release our bucket hydraulically all comes through this one single valve. You know, these hoses that come down here for our drive motors, they come through the frame on either side and then back up to the drive motors. Right here is our ride control valve with our ride control accumulator. This is just a nitrogen filled accumulator that acts like a spring that lets our arms kind of float up and down as we travel. And uh, that's called ride control. Right here we've got our fuse block uh, connection for the fuse block here, but we've also got one back here that this is the fuse box that goes inside the cab. We'll go over the controllers real quick. We do have a cab controller right here mounted to the back of the cab. Uh, this green one back here is our work group controller. And then we've got three controllers down here that we've kind of already talked about. You know, this one's covered with a rubber boot, but um, we've got our mid controller. We've got our hub controller and back behind that is going to be our drive controller for the SJC drive system. And, you know, and, and I, I said, you know, the, the main control valve is different. We can tell that it's bigger. We definitely got bigger lines and bigger ports on the auxiliary coming out of it. So there are some differences in the main control valve as far as the other T6676. This is a much larger um, auxiliary section on the control valve. Then over here we can find our hydraulic tank. Back behind that is our main hydraulic filter. And now the T-Series, not the rubber tire machines, but the T-Machines have a case drain filter back here in the back. Yeah, I kind of got my concerns about that. Not necessarily concerns, but God, they don't make it easy to get to. And then when we drain the hydraulics, we got to pull this hose off right here and drain the manifold and stuff. That's This is our return line for the power bob tetch. And if you don't have power bob attached, then we got to put a fitting in there and some other cap to drain the hydraulic. So it's kind of a pain. But anyways, just something to note that there is a case drain filter on the T models, the track machines, not the rubber tire machines. Well, there you have it. The brand new T86 from a mechanic's point of view. You know, it, it's very similar as far as the design and everything to the regular R series. I've said it is a lot larger machine. Um, the specs on it, you know, I don't really like or I don't really want to get into the specs too much because everyone says this is replacement for the T770 or the 86. The specs are extremely close to the T870. And is it the replacement for the 770 or the 870 or maybe both? I don't know. Rumor has it we've got another, another machine coming out, but we don't know yet. Still a rumor, um, but we do believe that it is in the works. The only difference between this and the T870 really well, there's, there's a lot of differences, but as far as power and flow, is, is really the lift height. We're not quite as high as the 870, and a lot of people do have a little bit of an issue with the uh, dump height of that, getting into dump trucks or whatever, but very close to the T870, so I don't really know which one it's replacing yet. But if you have any questions as far as the mechanical side of the machine, please let me know because I'll be interested in knowing what you're thinking and hopefully I can get into it and hopefully answer those questions. It looks like parts are now live to the public, so you can go on to bobcatparts.com and kind of look at the parts breakdown of these and how they work. The, the piston pump is what I wanted to see the inside of and the components, but it's not, um, they, don't, they, don't, they don't sell pieces and parts to it. You can only buy the pump, so there is no breakdown in the parts diagram as far as the, the piston pump goes. That's all I got to say about that. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs>